Well, hey guys, I want to take a look at this passive infrared motion detector. HCSR501. And it's the one here on the right. This one here I bought from Radio Shack a few years ago. I'm sure I paid too much money for it. And, you know, it worked. But the problem is it's very limited in what you can set. It has this jumper and it sets the intent or the uh, sensitivity low or high. I cannot adjust the uh, length of the trigger time or anything else on this thing. I needed something I can adjust mainly the the length of the trigger. So I decided to take a look at this new board here, you see it's got a jumper plus two trimmers that are adjustable. And here is the paperwork. I did buy it from Invistia Mall. They're based in the USA and they ship from their USA stock. So, you know, if you buy stuff from China, sometimes it gets here quick, sometimes it takes a month. But if you buy from these guys, you know, you're buying from a USA seller. So if you're in the US, these are the guys to buy these things from. And they sell other uh, Arduino type uh, shields and uh, sensors and things like that. Pause if you want to read any more of this stuff. The delay time says 0.3 seconds to 600 seconds. But down here, it says three to five minutes. Five minutes would be 300 seconds. So, you know, I guess I'd have to see which one is right. I'm mainly after a, a one minute trigger time, so I'm not too concerned. Uh, range is three to seven meters. It also has a trigger mode you can set with the jumper right here. So if you have it in single mode, single trigger, what happens is if you move in front of the detector, it detects you, it'll time out, turn off, and then if you move again, it'll turn back on and re-trigger. Now if you have it for a repeatable trigger, you move in front of the sensor, as it detects you, it'll keep resetting the timer so it won't turn off and then turn back on repeatedly so that's great because now I can set it for repeatable trigger so it doesn't keep turning off as long as somebody is you know in front of the sensor okay great I'm going to set this thing up and take a look at it. I'll take a measurement of the output current because I want to know how much current it can have available for driving a transistor or something like that Okay, I've hooked it up to a 9-volt battery. This is just a junction board for the connectors. And I have this LED right here. All this other stuff is not part of the circuit. I just don't have any free boards at the moment. One thing I didn't mention is this can be used with different supply voltages. You can run it from 5 to 20 volts. You don't have to worry about voltage regulators or anything like that. So no problem there. I'm, like I say, I'm using a 9 volt battery. I also measured the drive current of the output to be 3 milliamps. So you can check if you have enough drive current for a transistor or not. In my use, I won't have any problem with that. If you do use a MOSFET, remember the trigger voltage is stated at 3.3 volts. So, you know, it may not have enough voltage threshold to trigger a MOSFET. It, you have to get one with a low, a low threshold voltage. Okay, so anyway, I have the trimmers on this thing set to fully counterclockwise. And if I move in front of it, there it triggered. That's about three seconds. And, oh, there it goes. So, yeah, it triggers it for about three seconds. As 
seems to be working quite well. Now I'll adjust it for a longer time. Okay, I adjusted the sensitivity and time delay trimmers just a little bit. And there it goes. Yep, definitely much longer. I won't keep you waiting though. Okay, I'll show you how you can hook this up to a transistor for driving a brighter power LED. Let's take a look at the transistor I'm going to choose for the job here of driving our power LED. The BC337. These are excellent transistors for driving higher current loads from a digital type output. They'll handle up around 700 milliamps. The absolute maximum is 800 milliamps. And I'll have to remember the pinouts here. Pin 1 is collector, base in the middle. Okay, let's look at our gain. Let's see, 300 milliamps. Gain of the uh, 40 suffix ones are, I guess that's this line, 250 here. Typical. I guess that's what I'm looking at there. You definitely want the 40 suffix ones. They have higher gain than the 25s. So I'm not sure. Here's the gain. DC current gain. You know, we're going to be running somewhere between 100 and 300 milliamps. And that's really at around the peak gain is around 100. And this one's showing over 200. And I'm going to guess it's the 25 suffix one. I don't know. It could be that the 40 suffix one. But, you know, we, no problem. We have 3 milliamps times 200. So we can drive 600 milliamps. We don't need that much, but, you know, you, don't, you want to pad it a little bit anyway, but we have plenty. So there you go. Let's hook it up. Okay, I have the circuit for driving the power LED. Here's the PIR module here. We're looking from the top side. So this pin here is the positive supply voltage. The bottom pin is the negative or ground voltage from the battery. And going out this way from the supply voltage, we have a resistor to limit current through our LED. The transistor is connected here. The base goes to the output of the module and the emitter connects to the ground. You do not need a resistor on the base because I looked at a schematic of this and there's already a resistor built in so there's you know in series with the output so it's one less part you have to worry about so you can just connect the output directly to the base of the transistor. So when this triggers it'll send a high out to the base of the transistor, turning it on and making the LED switch on. And here's the circuit. I just removed this other LED and put in the transistor. And I'm using this, well, blindingly bright Cree CXA1304. Incredibly awesome LEDs. This one is a 9 volt LED. I'm not using a resistor in this case because it's 9 volt and the battery is 9 volt. Plus these are general purpose cheapo batteries I get at the dollar store and they'll limit current through this anyway because this will handle, you know, these things can handle up, up to an amp and we're only going to put, I don't know, probably 100 or 200 milliamps through it in this circuit. And as you can see it triggers and we get a very bright light. It lights the area up here. Let's see if I can get it to trigger again. I set the trigger time back to minimum. Yeah, it lights it up. 
So this is working great. Now let's take this somewhere. I want to see how far away this thing will trigger from. Okay, I'm upstairs in my semi-finished attic slash upstairs area. Set it on my table saw and I'm going to see if it can trigger on me. See how far away I can get it to trigger. Okay, I'm 25 feet away from it or so. I'm going to step into view of it. Well, it triggered on me. It got me. I have the trigger time set all the way minimum and the detection range maximum. So, it, uh, it catches me. No problem. Well, these things are the duck's guts. Highly recommended. You can buy them individually or you can get a five pack of them for under $9. I might do that and uh, use them as motion sensors outside. You know, I can have one detect if somebody's coming up to my door. Or, you know, I, I don't really have an issue with crime around here, but, you know, it's a good excuse to put these into use for something and use them to trigger a tone signal or a light or whatever. Connect them to a microcontroller, whatever you want to do with them. They are excellent for the purpose. Highly recommended. That's it. Thanks for watching. Well, hey guys, want to take a the take a the